Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Two Nerds, One Quest. I am your host, Andy MJC, here with three nerds, because math is hard. Uh, <laughs> first of all, on the ones and twos, the uh, the man running the game, the man having the slight technical difficulty this morning, Tom M. Norman, playing Aaron on. You're a fast peer. I didn't actually pee. I got coffee. I'm adding to the problem, not relieving the problem. So I may get up mid-show. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. He learned. He's got a bucket under his desk. I that man right there. Man, you need to... You know what? <laughs> if you're going to do that, turn your video off because the last thing I need to see is... John how Joe. would you even know? How do you know I'm not right now, Norm? Uh, I could be fair. like an Amazon employee. Right next up. Yeah. Right next... I got nothing. <laughs> the other voice you hear, one of the other voices you hear there is Ryan Kukta playing Crixus. Hey, good morning. Hey, thanks for getting up for us to watch a little bit of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I can't confirm that there will be either this morning. You just came out of the dungeon and I don't think there's a dragon on the slate this morning. Okay, that's fair. All right, well... We'll deal with uh, Coldscapes and Stefik. Oh, that, that, hey, that works. <laughs> I was I was gonna say drinking and diving, but because <laughs> that might happen today, who knows? <laughs> and the last member of our crew, the the legend, the lore master, the lazy dragon, Jeff Doc Williams. Good morning, everyone. Do you have a poem this morning, Jeff? Do you have a poem this morning? I guess. I was like, oh, you <laughs> do. I was going to say, this is the problem with doing it once. Is you get, there's expectations. I know. <clears throat> I know. We all I know. We're going to have to sing again at some point. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to lower our expectations so that it's uh, so that it doesn't... <laughs> Jeff had to quit his job today so that he could write poems <laughs> for Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> Yeah, and because of last week, now I'm probably going to get tapped for Wednesday night's group to have to do more of that stuff there, You're too. Get tapped by Wednesday night's group? Yeah. yeah. Hi, Beth. He's got a double boy. tap. <laughs> well, <clears throat> are you ready? No guarantee these right. are good, by the way. All right, let that beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's only going to make it worse. <laughs> oh. So, la last week's show, <clears throat> Norm surprise starts the show, and JC shows his feet. Kukta welcomes the crowd, and I drop the beat. The battle begins with its hits and its misses. Doc and the Grell exchange tentacle kisses. Crixus checks in with his... Uh, Crixus checks with his ga ghost without too much gain, and Aranon finishes the old ball and brain. With a beak for a prize and nothing about, the team heads on up to find their way out. One kobold got tossed, one frozen in stride, avoided the trap, but Sefik's waiting outside. Aranon dives in the snow and gets stabbed in the gut. Sefik bounces around. A third might misty step? What? <laughs> I like it. Out of it. So, Aranon, you got a cork in your mouth, you got a bottle in your hand, you're astride a pile of snow as Sefik bounces away from you. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, perception check. Are we uh, are we continuing in initiative? In initiative. Yep, initiative. Um, it. Let's see, Aaron just tackled him. Um, yeah, you get a perception check here, but it's technically Suffolk's turn because he, his first thing was to bamf up from underneath you. Doc, you're next. Seventeen. Then Ellie, then Crixus. Seventeen. Mm-hmm. You don't see Suffolk around. Wow. Is it? So I just tackled him. So that was my turn, right? Yeah, that was the end of your turn. You, With... you moved. You drew the bottle as you were moving. You pulled the cork. You tackled him, and you're about to. Your With... your start of your next turn was gonna. You were trying to figure out how to get your actions and bonus actions to be able to feed him this, but I yep. just couldn't. And my, my bonus action was pulling the bottle out as I ran? Was that my bonus action? Or no. 
You're part of the tackle, I think. Yeah. So with then my bonus action, can I put the cork back in the bottle and put it in my pouch? Or put it in a pocket? Because uh, uh, actions in combat interact with an not Oh, but that's just an action. That's not a... Yeah. Okay. I allowed you to pull the bottle out yep. while you were moving. That's pretty moment because I'm drawing a weapon or anything mm -hmm. while you're, mo you're moving 30 feet. You're going to have time to grab something. Yep. In my, um, you grappled him, which would have been your normal action. You could make the action to grapple mm -hmm. him. And then I gave your bonus action to knock him prone. If you succeeded on the rolls, yep. you needed to succeed. I gotcha. And you did. So... That's right. That's where all your stuff went. Mm -hmm, that's right. <clears throat> Just, I didn't have enough action economy to be able to have you feed him. So, um, so yeah, he goes poof out from underneath you. Um, you don't notice him. Uh, Doc, your turn. All right, uh, Doc's going to look around while pulling out the horn. And make a perspective the, uh, check. Horn of Silent Alarm. Uh, oh, it's a good day, good to start the show with a natural 20. Uh, so 20. Man. For 20? 20 on, yeah, his action either way was to pull out the horn and blow it. So he's going to try to like spook Suffolk into flinching or something or showing himself that's his plan anyway so okay you know what people need when they play dungeons and dragons dice dice, dice. all right hold on a second i'm gonna try this again my i went robot you sound fine well i sound I fine but you guys sound robot which is tough to hear you okay so hold that thought hold that thought he's got to reset his banana again that's it. has got the show title thing up. Resetting the banana would be a good. <laughs> uh, let's see. I can mention that at the end if I actually right. make a note of that. All good. Norm, put Do we sound better? Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it it's there must be something on my computer that's kicking in that's bumping my audio. I, I hear a little bit of an echo, but I don't know if that's on the stream or not. Does it, do you have another device with a microphone? Yeah, but there shouldn't be an echo. Echo, 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 A. Hey. Everything should be pulling from my Yeti. <laughs> All right, we're good. Yet, he isn't. Ah. Uh... Hey, <laughs> Um, okay, uh, so you look around, you don't see Savic. you see a disturbance in the snow, off to the north, but you don't see Savic himself. Alright, guys, I feel a disturbance in the snow, and I'll point and start moving that direction. And I'll assume pulling out the horn, blowing it, and moving that direction. Will be. I don't think I've ever tried blowing the horn to the point of harming someone or that. It's been more of a, an alert thing, so I don't know if that... I don't think it does damage, but if it would be enough to get him to run or something, but that's my turn. Okay, and you can move 25 feet? Uh, yeah, but there might have, there probably would have been a delay with the movement because trying to figure out what direction to run. So if I can't get all the way there, that's fine too. Or, oh, you wouldn't be able to get all the way there because you weren't by him. You were still 25 feet away from him. Right? Uh, we were all up attacking him, I think, when he bamfed. Is that the case? I hate not, not having a picture of a map sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, 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 he bamfed away and... He bamfed away and ran, then he ran toward, then we ran at him, then he ran back towards us and bamfed back to Ellie, so we ran back and, and hit him. Okay. And then yeah. Aaron and I come out. up just short. <laughs> That's yeah. just how short are you coming up. So you're going to be about five yeah. feet away. 
Um, and okay. you you actually see there is a humanoid like shape in the snow. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, but you assume it's Sephic. All right, good enough. Um, that brings us to Ellie, who is. Miss Eliana, what you doing? You had a... Oh, hey, we have a game log. Um, there was some... Let's see, Aranod hit, Crixus, Crixus. What did you do last? Oh, you cure wounds. That's right. And then Aranod. She had her spiritual weapon out, correct? Uh... But no, she never. No, she she never got it out. She, nope. she did not. No, she all three turns she cured. She did herself, then Aaron, and then herself again. Yep. Yeah, this guy's been eating up her shiznit. Um. So she is going to look around with a perception check. Let's see what she gets here. She got a good, pretty good perception. So yeah, she rolls a three. Um. She sees, she takes a minute, she sees Doc running and heads in the direction he's running. Um, and comes up and actually sees, she's got her mace out. And yeah, she's going to swing at the pile of whatever she sees on the ground. She can't tell it's him, but she is assuming it's him, so she's going to swing at him. He's prone. Advantage. Uh, advantage. It's a 16 to hit, which hits him. Wow, Ellie, you are killing it today. Nice work. <laughs> For three damage with her mace. Uh, there's her movement, her action. Um, she's sitting there. Uh, she says, uh, as a free action, Doc, are you okay? Um, and then, yeah, she's going to... See, she have here that she can do anything yes. spell wise. That's a good question. She has wounds, and she has a healing word that she could do. Um, she's gonna she's gonna wait for someone to say something. Um, quick this. All right, I'm gonna join my team who. Uh, clearly have found Sephic. Uh Am I going to get close enough to take a melee action? Yes. You got 30 did, feet of movement. Did you? I don't remember if I wrote it. I know the last thing you did was a guiding bolt. I can't remember if you ran up or not. Either way. Sephic would have been 30. All right. 30. So <clears throat> I will run up and uh, take a swing with my axe. All right. And I critically Give him the failed chop. on that attack. Critically failed. Ooh, that's not good. Well, slipped in the ice. ice. <laughs> as long as you don't put the axe into your own foot, you're fine. Well, actually, just go that route. You slipped on the ice because you said it, and you went running up, and you swung, and you swung so hard that you actually slipped, and you fell on your back. We'll say you're on your back prone alongside. All right. All right. Because I'm a ninja, I kip up, and I'm ready to... Oh. All right. Um, that is probably the end of my turn, then, as I'm feeling a little sheepish about that. All right. Aaron, you see Crixus run up, slip, fall on his butt. There's tail. Ellie's swinging at snow. <laughs> All right, I have to put the cork back in the bottle, and I shove the bottle into a pocket on my chest so I have easy access to it. I get up, which is some of my movement, right? Yes, half your movement to stand up. And then I'll run... So, do I actually see where he is at this point, since everybody's over there? Uh, you see where everyone is, kind of surrounding a pile of snow, but you don't actually see him. No one's actually technically seen him. You're swinging at... Uh, <laughs> We're swinging at a pile of snow. A pile of snow that looks kind of like a humanoid. 
right. I am going to look around again to be sure that there's nothing else around us. All right. Specifically, I'm looking for people or, you know, other attackers or even him. <laughs> Come on. There we go. 23. 23. Looking around at the snow, um, you don't see any other disturbances in the snow. Um, if he is not where they're all swinging, you have no idea where he is. Hmm. Alright, so I'm going to actually pull out my short bow and just kind of take up a steady position and have it ready. And I'm going to just kind of keep an eye around to be sure that we don't get ambushed from behind as they're all focused on this blobby snow. Okay. Um, so you're scoping around, you get your short bow, you're, pulled, you're holding an attack for movement or are you holding an attack? That's the question. Because you can hold your action, which you can hold an attack. What What do you mean by hold? If whatever your trigger is presents itself, you get to make your attack then. Oh, then yes. Between I would like action. to do that. Yeah. Holding so an action, you, you can do anything from you can stand next to someone and say, I'm just going to wait there and I'm going to catch them if they fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm stand by this door and slam it shut if it opens. Stuff like that. So, like, you, you need a trigger mm -hmm. that will set your action in so, motion. And if that trigger happens, then you get your action. Basically, I'm so, setting an if this, then that. <laughs> yep. So, you're, you, you, yep, exactly. Exactly. As a programmer, you are exactly doing that. That is a great way to think about holding an action. So, your if this is something hostile showing up. And then your that is I'm going to make my attack, <laughs> and you get that for your until your next turn. If you, if you hit your next turn without the trigger happening, you lose it. That's how, the only thing to it. How close am I to the cave wall? Like, am I? Because I we're the right entrance, is, in, uh, yeah. Rubble. Uh, I think probably 15 feet or so. Well, okay. you moved towards his. No, you didn't move anywhere, did you? I was by Ellie, you which would have been right by the cave entrance right so i yeah. just want to know if i if i'm close enough to put my back up against or have like the mountain to my back so that yeah. I, I yeah i'm gonna do that you could you could move your other 15 feet and be right there at the pile of rubble and just kind of scoping things out yep that would work that's what i'm doing okay that works perfectly um i actually looked up the Pythagorean theorem and found a calculator to quickly Why? calculate that because it matters in D&D &D because you talk about triangles all the time. They're this high in the air and I'm this far away. Am I able to actually hit them? When your players all of a sudden have two dragons on their yeah. side on the field, it, it matters. And it eight matters. owls and a couple of flying people. It mattered just now because starting point for Sefik, if this is him 30 feet this way, and Crixus is 30 feet this way. That is 42 feet. So he technically couldn't get there, although I said he could, but. That's that's math on a Sunday morning. I say yeah. a giant fuck you for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was, when am I ever going to need to know the Pythagorean theorem? D&D. &D. The enemy is 30 feet in the air and 40 feet away from you. <laughs> on the ground. How far away from you? So, uh, let's see, that was Aranon. We are back to Mr. Sefik. Um. <laughs> oh. uh.
One minute, I'm reading something. Dungeons and Dragons, good for reading and math. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just had to figure out when that actually happens. Um, a lo icy longsword is going to come out of this pile of snow at Ellie. Ooh. Um, oh, he's at disadvantage because he's attacking from the ground. That's uh, good. He misses with his first attack. His second attack is going to miss too because that's a... <laughs> wow. Okay, so he's got disadvantage, right? 19 and 6. And then 6 and 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's... Fun it's advantage is good for us. Who knew? Oh, yep. Go figure. I don't know if he actually has disadvantage from being prone, but he's buried under snow, so I'm calling it that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, sense would, you would assume he would. They would have thinks. So. Well, I think the 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 rules from being prone is people have advantage against attacks on you. I don't think you actually have disadvantage from being prone. I'll have to double check that, or Jeff can. Uh, except I can. It's my turn next. It's your turn right now. So go ahead and uh, he did. All right. Turn. So if I saw that sword coming out of this yeah, snow, he's... I would definitely. He's gonna Definitely stand. Up. He should have stood oh, up. Oh man! <laughs> he pr yeah, he should have. Uh, he should have uh, yeah. before he stood up. So, he... and I'm gonna hold him at a disadvantage. So I should have had him stand up and then attack. Would have been yeah, because if, if he was still hiding in the snow, then I would have advantage. But uh, just swing at him with the with the bulwark smasher. All right. Get him. <clears throat> Uh, oops, wrong screen. Uh, dirty 20 to hit. Mm -hmm. 13 damage. Okay. And that's a natural one. Oh, mm -hmm. wait, I have inspiration from last week. I'm re-rolling. Yeah. Oh, uh, 17 plus 6 is 23. All right. Yep, that hits. And, uh, damage is 7. Damage is 7. All right. Ellie is seeing him stand up. And Does um, Aranon see him stand up? Oh, yeah, Aaron, Aranon, you do see him stand up. Would you like to shoot at him? I'm going to yell, tackle him. <laughs> you want to fart in his mouth, don't you? Uh, yeah, you did, you did you like my little comments from last night? I, I intentionally just said fart in his mouth because the other thing is flipping gross so because because we need to share with everybody uh we were messaging last night and genius was talking about you know how you know he likes generally speaking i i go back and watch the show genius watches the show uh cooch i think watches the show john i don't do you i don't watch it i i listen to it when there was a podcast version of it but yeah so we were talking back and forth and i said that uh I want to tackle him again so that I could fart in his mouth. And Kukta said, gross. So I doubled down and said, better yet, I'm going to hold him down and use the shitting potion myself. So my goal is to now tackle him. And yeah, we'll see what There's happens. A called, There's a reason we're called Two Nerds, One Quest. Mm, well, that's <laughs> not the reason. <laughs> that's not the wow. end. I just feel like that dark even twist. that's like a category of only fans that nobody actually wants to go to but exists. And uh probably we don't need to integrate that into our Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. I feel like nope. this guy needs it though. He needs Maybe. it in his life. Oh boy. <laughs> We'd um, always be able to find him because of the smell. It is true. Um, but to answer your question, I am going to... Are, are they standing in my way? Like, would I have to split the difference Don't roll between... Don't one. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, that's literally how I play that. If they're standing in, in, in your way. Like, I play you can shoot through a friendly square. But if you roll that one, you're going to hit your friend. Yeah. I am not going to risk it. 
I'm just gonna keep on my guard until my next turn. Come on, this is this is a close shutter norm. Come on, buddy. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. You can shoot over Doc's head. That's true. <laughs> Probably. All right, so you're 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 holding that. Um, Ellie is going to. Uh, no one said anything about being needing healing or anything, so she's going to mace this guy. To the face. That will hit. For six damages. She just... Bam, he stands up. She just upside the head with the mace. And <laughs> off to the side. Um, and she gets back in a ready position to attack again. Crixus. Um... All right, so Crixus is on his ass. Yep. So half your movement to stand up, and <laughs> the other half your movement to actually get in melee. <laughs> You're in melee with him, technically. I feel like I'm at an interesting place where I can try to grapple his legs and topple him. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of trying to get up, I'm going to try to grapple his legs. Okay. And uh make a make a unarmed attack try and grab his legs up from underneath him get him get him oh my god don't oh, come on that critical fail <laughs> you grab second him. straight die you you, you, you grab something below the snow and you go to yank on it and you realize it's not him at all it's like a rock or something there's just like this boulder you've grabbed onto and yanked away from him in the snow guess who's switching his dice on D D beyond even though it does literally nothing <laughs> we are what we are <laughs> it doesn't matter no one is laughing at you we're laughing with you <laughs> It doesn't right. matter if they're real, they're digital. I, I appreciate stuff. the effort, Crixus, to help. So Crixus grabs a rock and damn it! And he's really pretty frustrated in himself and he's developing a plan to put everything he's got into a guiding bolt next turn to make himself feel a little better. But until then, Crixus is still sitting on the ground. All right. Feeling sorry for himself. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a doc eye height. Oh, all right. Uh, then from Crixus, we go to Aranon. I, well, I am less than 30 feet away, right? Less than 30 feet away. Let's see. Move fifteen. Oh, where's that? Where's that Pythagorean theorem? Because you moved fifteen towards the cave. So you oh, got I that. And he went fifteen crap. feet away. You are technically thirty-three feet away. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. But say, you can dash as a bonus action. Yeah, you could. You could dash as a bonus action. So you can move and dash as a bonus action because you have cunning action as a rogue, and then be on top of him. Oh. My. I'm going to be well, on top of him. You need to grapple him. I am going to dash, run, spear, hold him down again. Ride him like a horse. I am. I will allow you to grapple him. You won't be able to get him prone yet. That'll have to wait until next turn. Because you're using your bonus action to dash. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. What am I doing to. What am I rolling? Uh, a unarmed attack will right, to try and grapple him. Eighteen. Yes. You run right up to him and wham! You got him. Wrapped up. He is grappled. Oh, I'm soaking him. Cool. Boy, uh, my, now next, we find my a, next turn he's in trouble. <laughs> What was that, genius? 
Now we find out if he's got a fourth misty step. Uh, I know. I swear to God, I I will actually shit my pants if he disappears again. I just want to give him a fourth one, just to be. <laughs> just to watch my brown my just, my tunic. Yeah, turn watch, brown. You, watch your head just tweak on itself. Um, my head will spin around on my neck. Uh, let's see. Hang on a second. Hang on. Look at this. Uh, let's see what this. Oh, do 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 do. <clears throat> okay. He can still attack your ass, which is what he's gonna do. Um. So, I gotta make the. I gotta make what? these encounters now in the encounter builder, so I can use the dice roller. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's he gonna do? Ridge around and pinch me? No, remember how I was talking about the digital dice roller, Norm? And I wish the enemies, you could roll the dice through the digital dice. They have it now, but you got to use the encounter builder to do it. Oh. I just want to click on the things in the stat block. It'd be too easy, though. Um, his first swing at you is a seven. Goldfish. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His second one is a 19 to hit. Ah, uh, that, that hits me. Uh, all right, so then he has this. What is he hitting me with if I have his arms? If you I have him grappled. him grappled. You have him grappled. He can still attack if you have him grappled. Hmm. He just can't move anywhere. Theoretically, you're holding him around the waist. Yeah. Ah. Remember as, any, for... as any good person does. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's four. And. Uh... So you take four slashing damage and 13 cold damage. No! Oh, wait, no, 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 back up, back up. 13 slashing damage. I did this backwards. And, um, 13 slashing damage and, uh, 10 cold damage. Okay, well, I'm down. Oh. Yeah. So you crumble to the ground at his feet. <sighs> I just can't win. He's a motherfucker. That is for sure. And um, let's see, when you when he hits you twice, you crumple to the ground at his feet. So you let him go. He's going to. Oh, I forget to do that. So that's... He's gonna lay down so that other people can jump on top of him and cooperate. Play time is over. He's gonna run. He would. He's gonna he's gonna double move. Opportunity oh. attack. Yep. Out to the road and down the road. Oh no. Uh thirteen to hit. Misses. Crixus. You have an opportunity to attack mm. too. On the ground. You could trip him if you want. Yeah, I mean, I'll effort that. Hell yeah, you will. He's looking at the rock in his hand and throws it at him. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Ellie as well? I rolled Ellie's. He's a... <laughs> Riding the roller coaster of emotion tonight. <laughs> see, yours was a nat 20 as well? Yes. I wasn't going to announce <laughs> Ellie's. And I was waiting for yours, but I decided I'd roll hers. She rolled a nat 20 as well. Oh, roll some damage. So, I'll hit him low and she can hit him high. Yeah. I mean, mine's just an unarmed strike, so it's just three. How does just he die? <laughs> <laughs> Punched uh, him in the ankle and he's. Ow! Yeah. Damn it. Which caused an, a blood clot that was there to travel up to his heart. <laughs> it just happened to be there. Yeah. He dies slowly over the next seven weeks. <laughs> 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 L 
Billy's crit was only a nine as well. <laughs> oh my god. He gets out to the road and heads 30 feet down the road. Oh, uh, I thought you were trying to trip him. I oh, was trying to trip him, yeah. That's why I did my unarmed. Oh, that's why you did unarmed. Okay, yeah, yeah, you tripped him. He trips, cool. he face plants. Um, Ellie clobbers him over the back of the head with the mace. He's laying in the snow there. Um, still scrambling. Doc. So how far did he get then on that turn with falling down and trying to keep going? Oh, five feet away. Oh, yeah. He's prone. Uh, since there's not much I can do about uh, Aranon laying there, I'm going to go ahead Take and my two clerics around me. Take my potion. I don't know where you put it. I would think it's in your bag. Uh, I will just try to take him out. He's prone, you said? Yes, he is prone. <clears throat> oh, that's good, because I want to reroll that. Uh, 15? 15 to hit? Hits, yes. All right, uh, seven damage. Okay. And... Jeez, good thing he's prone. Very good thing he's prone. Oh, it doesn't matter. Miss. You miss? Not critical, but miss, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then since he's... Uh, I'll do it either way. I will... Uh, the direction that he looked like he was trying to run, I'm going to try to get in front of him. To okay. Yep, you can get around the other Block side. his way, but staying within melee so that if he does try to run, I yep. can hit him again. Absolutely. All right. Ellie looks at Aaron on instantly, of course. Um falls to her knees, placing both her hands on his chest and casts Cure Wounds. <laughs> you get eight hit points back. <laughs> she, she rolled a one. <laughs> it's something, though. So how do I get out of this failure success? Um, click Just on give it. yourself hit points. Yeah. If you actually click on that box, oh, it'll, I see. Yep, you'll be able to give yourself hit points. You can give yourself eight hit points. So you yep. gap back to life. I gotcha. She'll stand back up and move towards him, <laughs> like a pissed off mother. <laughs> she dropped to her knees, kneeled there on, stood up, and then stalked over. To <laughs> <laughs> Why I oughta. <laughs> Uh, Crixus, you're laying on the ground next to Sethic. Um, I am going to. I'm just gonna walk over and try to hit him with my hand axe. <laughs> just roll over onto top of him. Like, actually, I'm still on the ground, right? You are. So... Yeah. yeah, just roll. Stand up and walk over. He's five feet away. Yeah. Stand up and walk over there. How much rolling traveling can you do? Good idea. You get advantage when you stand up because he's prone. So you stand Perfect. up, you walk over him, you got your hand axe. Perfect. Do it. 30 feet walking, 10 feet rolling. 20 to hit. Oh, yeah. That hits. Fiver. How does he die? Oh, yeah. So... The blood clot went faster. <laughs> Dang. Um, I'm going to bury my hand axe right in the back of his skull and leave it there for visual effect. Hot bam. All right. Are you going to flex? Put a, Wind put a up. boot on his back and flex? Wham. Ah. Right in the back. There's a sickening crunch as it goes right into the back of the skull and it just kind of sits there and you know, Pull on it for a second and go, okay, that's not coming. You let it go. Just leave it sit there. Kind of bleeds out into the snow. Actually, it doesn't really. It doesn't bleed out into the snow much at all. It's kind of strange. Mm. Okay. Take that, you son of a bitch. Blink out of this now. <laughs> yeah, let's see you blink your ass out of this. <laughs> right, stop. Uh, how, um, are we out of initiative? Mm -hmm. okay. how, 
How avalanched was the entrance the mouth? I know there was a lot of snow, but was it completely sealed off? No, there's like a two, three foot gap. Top of it. Um, thinking would the, what would be the best thing to do with the body? Maybe that hole in the cave? Well, do we need to do anything with the body? Wasn't the... Do we have to bring any uh, part of them back or anything for <laughs> the we, bounty? We were told to make sure that nobody knew that it happened or that it was at least that it was us. Okay. So, obviously, Hopefully we're no going to us. search the body thoroughly and try to find something on him that is uniquely his. That oh. sword that became ice. Yeah, I think. That it was sounds like he has a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, put him in the bag of holding. Scoot and Jack says, <laughs> 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 "Ain't nobody gonna find him then." I mean, we could transport him to a different location. <laughs> I mean, I'm if there's anything that you could grab, I mean, that's not a terrible idea. Um, I mean, his, his dark hair was pulled back in a ponytail. Did you uh, say it's not a had... bad idea to put a body in the bag of holding? I may have. Put him in a body bag. So, he doesn't need to breathe. I mean... Yeah. I, I'd say wrap his head up so he doesn't bleed all over my stuff, but... He's not bleeding. That's... That's, that's what's on. A, a weird thing oh, about that's him. right. He's not really so... bleeding. He's a white walker. Definitely, definitely take his weapons and anything on him that could be used as a weapon, because we don't know. We don't know why he's not bleeding or what. We don't yeah, have, I don't want to be stabbed through the bag of holding. Kind of a, kind of a creepy dude. What to do with him? He suddenly swings out at Ellie. That son of a um, bitch. Um, that is a. Do it's what is the two hands? So uh, yeah, that hits her. So we either need that, to stake him through the heart or chop off his head. Or there not can be a with potion and put him in the damage. bag of holding. Fourteen slashing damage, and uh, seven cold damage. 14 and 7 is 21. Um, Doc, it's your turn. We're back in initiative. What the hell? Uh, all right, unleash. Uh, just dropping. I'd say drop the hammer, but it's actually an axe. Is he still on the ground? Mm-hmm. Axe and he back. probably still has my hand axe in the back of his fucking yes, head. Which is really strange. <laughs> uh, four... <laughs> 14 to hit? Yes, just hits. Alright, 7 damage. Okay. And second attack. Jeez, so glad that... Forget it. Advantage <laughs> isn't helping, even. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, Ellie, uh, kind of shocked and surprised and a little scared. Um, Me too, Ellie. Actually, um cast Cure Wounds on herself in that moment. <laughs> Good lord, lady. She can't cast Cure Wounds for more than 8 hit points, apparently. She rolled the 1 again. Um, and then she did that to herself. What is she doing? Yeah, uh, can she... Ooh. Ooh, ooh. She is going to cast Sacred Flame. Melt his yeah. ass. Good, a... Good one. Cure Wounds is uh, action, right? Oh, yeah. She can't do Sacred Flame. You're right. You're right. My bad. Yep. Nope. She doesn't have a bonus action cantrip still. She is done because she's not going to step away from him. Uh, Crixus. Crixus. 
Can I step on his neck and try to pull my hand axe out and then take a swing? Does that feel reasonable? Uh, no. Because Get the hand axe with your other hand axe. One is, All right, well, one is an attack, which are both actions. All so right, so I... All right, well, he's still on the ground, so I will pull my other hand axe from my belt then. Yep. And I will take another swing okay. at really trying to hack his neck and try to remove his head from the rest of his body. Um, gee, who knew? Seventeen to hit. Yep, that hits. Seven. Seven. You get a good hack into the side of his neck, and it's kind of it didn't sever his spinal cord, but he's got a big chunk kind of out of his neck now. He's not bleeding. It's the damnedest thing. There's no yeah. blood to this. Almost like a shard of ice just kind of fell out of the side of his neck. Um, and he stops moving again. Oh. Alright, my turn is over. Aaron, I guess. Uh, I guess I'm going to run over to where the body is and use my short sword to take a swing at his neck to see if I can aid in okay. the process. Okay. He's on the ground, so you have advantage. Oh, that's right. I don't need it. 25. Yeah, that hits. Well, a crit would be awesome. Ten. Nope. Ten. Uh, nine. Nine. Plus sneak attack? Oh, because he's already yeah, engaged. He's engaged. Yeah, sure. And you had advantage. Andy technically doesn't see it coming. <laughs> I suppose. That makes Nine sense. plus. Oh. Beautiful. 16. I almost, I had six, six, and four. 16 is huge. 16 and nine is 25. 25. Yep. Yak. And his, uh, his head comes clear from his body. Kick it. You kick his body? No, I'm gonna no, boot no, his head. head like a, I'm gonna kick ball. his head like a soccer ball. <laughs> still has my hand. <clears throat> yeah, the hand it's, not, still, it's not gonna roll very clean. Do, do, hey, make your make your do, attack roll for this kick of his head. Do you have a moment here. Un unarmed strike. Yes. Eight. Eight. You kick the head and it kind of flips to the side and the axe stops it. I was hoping you'd roll a one and then have you kick the axe. <laughs> a net 20. I was I was hoping for a net 20 to boot that thing like a field goal. Like I'm kicking a field goal. Um, after a moment, the body swings a sword at you, Aaron. Oh, I'm going down again. I only have eight hit points. At disadvantage. Have a tendency. I mean, it should be triple disadvantage. He doesn't have a head. That's a nat one on the first attack. <laughs> that makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like at this point it's Monty Python. Yeah. A bit, yeah. Um, the second one is a, he had a 17 and an 18 on the dice. So a 22 to hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, for 10 points of slashing damage. I'm down. And you're down. And there's some cold damage associated with that again. I was up, and then I was down. Doc! <laughs> there's a headless body swinging a sword around. I'm starting to think um, the knockout potion wouldn't have helped. I'm starting to think you're probably right. <laughs> we probably still could have made it to uh, this so. I'm going to... I'm going to go for the weapons. I'm going to try to get you get them out of his hands. Okay. So, uh, is that Hand unarmed piece. or grapple? Or... Are you trying to grapple, trying to hit the weapon with your weapon? 
Uh, I want. I'm gonna try to take the weapon from his hand. Okay, so that's an unarmed attack. You're gonna, you're gonna grapple him and try and wrestle his weapon away. It's gonna is take two turns to do it. Advantage so. since he's prone, or is that not advantage? Sure, advantage. Yeah, Called well. All right, it was a 17 without advantage, so uh, less with advantage. So I'll take the 17. Okay, so you have him grappled, so you can use your action next turn to try and take his weapon away. Okay. Um, let's see, that's Doc. Ellie is going over to Aaron on. Um, she is going to. I mean. Cheer with him. Hey, there's a good one. 14. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice work, Ellie. Um, she's. Uh, if you see Ellie's face, she's panicking. She she understands, um, like resource wise, <laughs> she's getting near the end of her rope. <laughs> she's just a little scared. As I yeah. come back to life, I'm just gonna say, uh, anybody else think this was a bad idea? <laughs> um, let's see. That's Ellie. She did that. She moved there. Crixus. All right, I'm going to try to step back a few steps. All right, if you step back a few steps. Yeah, it doesn't notice you stepping back. It's Perfect. facing the opposite direction. So there's no I'm going to put my last spell into a third level guiding bolt. Okay. And just try to, like, blast them apart Iron Man style. Uh, what... Uh, never mind. I'll, I'll look. Uh, uh, go ahead and make your... It's it's an attack roll, right? Oh, okay, cool. Spell attack, yep. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Miss. Oh, jeez. Oh, He's right there. Yeah. Is he... Do I get advantage on it or not? Uh... <laughs> I don't think no, so. You, have it's a range. you stepped away. It's an arranged attack, and he's prone, so it's technically disadvantage. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, that was a super miss, then. Bummer. All right. Yes. All right. Um, I'm gonna miss. step back into him then. Okay. So you step 15 feet away. Step 15 feet towards him. Yeah. Uh, guiding bolt misses. <laughs> um, Aranon. <clears throat> You're prone on the ground. You've just been healed. Back away. <laughs> um. So, <laughs> so Doc is wrestling with his hand with the sword, right? He's got him grappled. He's not going. The yeah. body's not going anywhere. The body can't go anywhere right now. I All feel right. like I'm kneeling on him, well, pre preferably his arm, but or at least one arm. So sure. Yeah. I'm going to go after the arm with the sword. Then I'm going to try and take the sword and. Okay. Yeah, you run over, make a make a strength check. You run over and grab the sword from his hand. Come on, you're strong, right? He isn't, really. Critical fail with a negative one strength. So I have a zero. A z oh you God. rolled a zero. I rolled a zero. Unbelievable. Oh, come it's on, you should have advantage. Really that, right? strange. Yeah. Going to take the sword from his hand, you just cannot... Like, it's almost like it is frozen to his hand. I'm surprised it didn't stab like, me don't... and knock me down again. No, he's his hand is like broken <laughs> to it. Um, yeah, would that have been advantage because he's already uh, grappled? No, because it's a contested strength check. It has nothing to do with him being prone. It was uh, not. It was not contested. I had a zero. <laughs> your side. You had a chance though. He rolled a nine. Like he had a nine. Like the, if you were gonna do it, it would have happened there. I can't Chop believe I rolled a sword. freaking critical fail with Come a zero. Come on, video. please. Just, just drop the sword. Is... Oh, <laughs> you never drop your sword. Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> like talking to a dog. I'm going to have to tickle it out of him next time. Uh, ironically oh, enough, you can still attack when he's grappled. So, uh, Norm. Aranon. Uh, oh, you did oh, say you backed away, remember? Wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Before, before we continue. Before what? My... Can I use my inspiration from so much, so very long ago to try again? 
Or is it too late? Had I not rolled a die okay. to attack you, I would okay. have said nope. yes. Nope. But I have That's a good. nat 20 on this die right here. Oh, fuck so. you. <laughs> Remember when you ran away and then, oh, wait. 12, 24. I'm down. <laughs> double the die. That, that Hold on, are you dead is the question. Yeah, we're figuring out if Aranon's actually dead at this what's point. Your, what's well, your max hit points, four. Tom? 38. 24. And, and how many and did you have? 14. Eight. Five. Eight. Five. Double this 10. So that's 34 and 3 is 37 total damage. 37? Yes. Well, you're not dead dead. <laughs> I'm it's not good. dead yet. It's good. You're just in death saving throws. I'm getting better. Um, Is there a second attack or just the one? Uh, there I is. because I'm morbidly curious. Yeah. <laughs> We're really just getting screwed by the here. It's coming your direction, Doc. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's I'm crazy. really... I, I, I'm not faring well on this side of the, the dice rolls. That's a crit. Fail. <laughs> His arm snapped off. It was frozen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. Actually, Norm, you're not dead. Because he doesn't have his head, he's at disadvantage. So the critical fail was actually his first attack. So take your hit points back. <laughs> all of them? Not all of them, just the just the ones he had prior to being hit there. So whatever it was, the back to 14, I think you said. Yeah. So then the second attack is at him, <laughs> which is a 17 and an 11. The 11 plus the bonus is um, 16 hit you. Oh, yes. 16 hits. Okay. So, uh, ooh. you may be, be down still. Um, because it's 21. Yeah, that puts you down again. Yeah. So you are down. You're Good not Lord. struggling against death, but. I'm up, well, I'm down. I'm are. up, I'm down. I'm up, I'm down. I'm up, I'm down. Start calling you the Grand Old Duke of York. I was going to say, I'm like a hooker in the back of a car. <laughs> yeah. Um this is uh learning next level of battle strategy. I see Kirk, I see Crixus's mind rolling with I <laughs> All right. Doc's turn. Doc's turn. All right. I kind of I want to I want to keep him down on the ground, so I'm going to do what I can to keep him down and I'm going to yell I'm going to look at his neck and see the ice. I'm going to look at any wounds he has and see that they're frozen and that the ice is, the blade is ice and say, fire, we need fire. Hit him with fire. I got, you know, I'm not going to be able to get a torch, but I will. He doesn't attack that, but I can't punch him in the back of the head. Um, but I guess I'll try to just try to strip one of the weapons out. Uh, contested strength. Yep. Uh, 13. You struggle. You think you got it for a moment. But he just... Yeah. No. no. He's not letting go of it. Alright, I think cool. that's all I have. Uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, what does Ellie have in her equipment? Does she have a... Oh, she has a spent necklace of fireballs. <laughs> yeah, just... Uh, and Sacred Flame is Radiant, not fire. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, I was reading that before, and then I was reading Guiding Bolt to see if it was fire and it's Radiant as well. Well, she does. She's got torches. She's she has got torches. Torch. She has a torch. I'll, I'll tell you I have access to fire, but you guys need to get away from me. From him. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie pulls out a torch and, as a bonus action, lights the torch. And that's... So she's got a lit torch in her hand now. She's right there. Um, let's see, we had Doc's turn. Yeah, um, it's Crixus. Yeah, I, I was gonna say it's probably just best to let me lay there for a while. I just, I just need to take a timeout. <laughs> um, 
Well, I mean, he could continue to attack you, which is my concern. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to turn around and cast Cure Wounds with my very last spell. You're there, too? Holy shit. Whoa. My apologies uh, to the group. (laughs) Now, if you die, you're dead forever. Uh, Not entirely. There's, There's... Ellie's got two spell slots left. And heal 14. Okay, you got 14 hit points. Fair enough. And then I'm going to say, back off. I need to trigger my rebuke. And then, Yeah, uh, I'm running. Don't worry about that. And <laughs> then uh, damage? pass my turn. Yeah, yeah. Ellie's rebuke. Oh, fucking cool. Nice. All right, you're going to have your turn, Crixus. Uh, Aranon, you, you come to, you're disoriented. You've been unconscious, you've been conscious, you've been unconscious, you've been conscious. You're laying on the ground. You're Sephic. <laughs> Mommy? Uh, you see Ellie's got a torch in her hand. And she's kind of standing above you. Doc is sitting on top of this body, wrestling with its arm, trying to pull this sword from its hand. I'm I'm gonna like sit up and say, "Did we win?" <laughs> the, you um, see the body still moving, so. Yeah, I mean, it would be funny if it wasn't like final scenes of The Shining right now. Like... <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna stand up and move 15 feet away towards the cave entrance. Okay. And. Uh, it can still take going... an AO on you. What's that? It can take an AO on you. <laughs> can it see him? I mean, really? It's at disadvantage. <laughs> it's at the disadvantage. It doesn't matter. So You'll like probably still end up with a nat 20 Does disadvantage. 12 hit you? No. It's a good thing it was at disadvantage because the second roll was a nat 20. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah. Dice are on fire today. Oh, my God. I hate your dice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'll yeah, send I'm you an Amazon link to a new set I want if you want to buy them for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, no. Um, <laughs> then, then we can just blame you for my dice. <laughs> so you step away towards the cave. Yep, 15 feet away. Uh, I am going to... Do you have a... Well, I don't know. I'm looking... Can I light? Oh, I suppose. I'm trying to think if I could light an arrow. Sure. All right, I'm going to light an arrow and fling it at him. You, uh, well, it's going to take you an action to light the arrow. You're going to oh. be in the same boat Ellie's in. If you want to do it. i just get close to Ellie and use her torch. I was, I've been waiting for one of you to actually grab the torch out of her hands. <laughs> Because you could totally grab it from her and just throw it on his body if you wanted. You moved I suppose that would have made most sense, huh? Yeah, you stood up and moved 15 feet. <laughs> so you're out of yeah. Combat. Yep. I am uh, lighting my arrow. Okay. So you stay back. You get an arrow lit and you got it knocked towards him, ready to release. Um, let's see, so you got up and moved. Ellie's right there. Doc. Uh, let's see. And make, make, see if I can make a. Nope, he's gonna swing it. Who's holding him? All right. Um, oh, two eighteens. So a twenty-three to hit. That hits. Um, that is eight slashing damage, and. Uh, nine cold damage. So a total of 17 damage to Doc. Okay. All right. And then he can't go anywhere because he is still technically grappled. Um, let's see. Then it is Doc's turn. Yep. All right. I see the, I heard Crixus and I see the, the torch lit. 
I'm going to uh, stand up. You're letting him go uh, then? Is Ellie within 15 feet of me? Yes. All right. Uh, I'm going to stand up, walk to Ellie, and... You don't have to walk. She's like, like, you can just okay. out. Okay. I want to grab the torch and drop it on him. Okay. So you grab the torch and, and drop it on him. And to slowly step back or whatever. Okay. Uh, you drop the torch on him. Roll a d6 for me. Four. Four. Okay. That's part of them starts on fire. Um, and you step away. Are you doing anything else then? No, I think that's everything I got. Okay, Ellie is going to take her mace and just try and drive the torch into him further. <laughs> As it's laying on his body, he's kind of screeching here, but she's going to take her mace and attack. And she hits for four damage. Which puts out the torch. <laughs> um. Actually, let's, let's check on that. No, the torch is still. Just... You had you had to say it. <laughs> torch is still going. He's on fire technically. I figured. I figured a nat one attack roll would <laughs> would put the torch out. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that's Ellie Crixus. Um. Body's still moving. I guess I'm just going to attack it with my hand axe. Okay. I'm trying to chop off his arm that is holding the sword. Okay. 25 to hit. Yep, 25 hits. And 8 damage. 8 damages. All right. Um, body's still moving. Uh, you kind of got into the joint. Sword came free. The arm looks a little uh, wobbly, like it's not going to function very well. Uh, again, no blood, just kind of ice and cauterized, frozen crap. Aaron, you have a, a lit arrow knocked. Well, now I kind of want to run over there and stab him with his own sword. <laughs> Boy, this is a the drama. ice damage might heal him. Who knows? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not think of that, actually. I figured it would. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm yep. shooting my arrow at him. <laughs> hey, Tom, the DM likes that idea, so you may want to shoot the arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm shooting my arrow. Careful what you say around me. I'll, I'll use your ideas. <laughs> Don't equip the DM with more tools. Seventeen. Seventeen hits. Is this, is this one of the uh, ranged against prone disadvantages? Oh, yeah, this would be. You'd be no. at disadvantage. Sorry. Fuck. Yep, no, that is correct. Ah, doesn't matter, 20. Okay. No yep. yep. <laughs> Alright, uh... Da, 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 da. Thur, uh, thur, uh, seven damage. Seven damage and then another d6 for the fire. Ooh. Two. All right. <laughs> so the arrow hits him just above where the torch has kind of been bashed into his chest, and the body s- slowly starts on, stops moving, and just burns in front of you, uh, leaving a charred black corpse. If you wait long enough, it does not. Yeah, does not get up from this point. Let's get the head to. 
<laughs> you walk over, grab another walk over. Crixus walks over and just grabs his axe and head up with it. Yeah, so when I pull the axe out, I am going to cut off his ponytail okay. thing, and then the rest of his head we should just burn, right? Yes. Yeah, throw it on the pile. The last thing I want to do is wake up with a severed ice head gnawing on my leg. <laughs> yes, that is the last thing you want. Yeah, so I'd cool. like to. I'd like to at least grab the two weapons. He had two, right? I think. Actually, there's there. one weapon. As his body starts burning and these weapons melt away, <sighs> almost as if they were made out of ice. Mm. Those have been cool to have. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're super cool looking too. I mean, like, like look at that thing. <clears throat> it's, it's like all made out of ice. It's fucking cool. It's badass. Yeah. Okay, um, short rest, guys. Short rest? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much want to go to bed right now. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to curl up next to the flaming, we have a... the flaming body Come on, and guys. take a nap. We got a, we got a party to go to tonight. I don't want to <laughs> stay. Doc says that. Let's take a short rest and get back to town. Then we can take a nap. So, Zelly. I'm going to give your the work? ponytail to Aranon. Put in the bag holding. Yep, I'll stick it in there. So I'm going to look, turn to Doc and say, you're more concerned about getting your wick wet than making sure this guy doesn't get back up. How many hit points do you have? Shut your mouth. Back I hand. still have more than you. <clears throat> that is neither um, here nor there. What's a hit so, point, Ellie says? <laughs> it's it's a... Gonna... It's a it's a man score thing, we, you know. Tally when we're talking around the bar. It's called hit points. <sighs> and in their competitions, Crixus is gonna check the body. Is it charred away, or is there substance that we would want to throw down the pit? There's substance you'd probably want to throw down the pit. So Crixus wants to throw the charred remains down the pit. So you're gonna take some time to climb through the small opening and move the yes. body through there and then throw it down that pit. Okay. Yep. I don't... A short rest will not do anything for me. So okay. They can I don't, take a yeah. short rest if they want. While they're taking a short rest... Um, I'm going to help Crixus. No, you're not. You're going to roll some... Hit dice. Yeah, hit, hit rolls. <laughs> Get some hit points back. You are not going to help me. I'm going to use right. uh, two hit dice at least. Uh, one plus three is four, and oh, ten, nice. Thirteen and four, seventeen. So I just rolled oh, yeah. two d. Let's see, how does this work? So whatever your hit die, if you click on short rest, yep. it'll so tell you what your hit die is. Two. Yeah. So you roll your hit die plus your constitution modifier each time you roll a hit die, and then mark it and then off. add it to your and then add it and to if your health. Each time you take a, a long rest, you get half of your hit die back. Um, so if you have five right now, you would get two back on a, on a long rest. So that's why, I, player knowledge, I would only want to use two if I can help it. Yep. So I got 16. For, for me, but you might, you, you know. 16 back. <laughs> yep. I used two. Yep. That works. Uh. Crixus, make me a uh, strength check. Dig away the snow. See how long this takes. Athletics check. Yeah, okay, I'll do an athletics check. <laughs> do the athletics check. That's better. Better, <laughs> better. yes, you get, you get the... Um, I don't know if the bonuses are different, but I don't care at this point. <laughs> Same. <laughs> you are able to dig this away uh, in, in the time that they take their short rest and haul the body up and into the cave and um, throw it down into the river and watch it wash away. The river was your like first access point to this. Now, before I chuck it, I'm going to just one last, like, is there anything of value on his person? Uh... Charred or not? Um, 
No. No. So noted. <laughs> yeah, no. There isn't anything he had on him other than uh, his weapons. Right. His weapons were magically summoned ice. So Doc is passing around the flask. All right. Some well, I'm gonna outsider Fork that is... might still be warm. Mm-hmm. Fork is burnt ass body down the pit, and then I'm gonna join the crew. You watch it kind of go over the river, down the river, and through the opening. Of... <laughs> that one. Head and all. Only thing we kept was the ponytail. Perfect. Okay. Um. All right. So you go and join your patriots outside as they are short resting. Um, Ellie is looks wiped. Uh, they're passing around a flask of uh, cider ish stuff. <clears throat> you like to do. What time is it? Midday. It's dark out though. Head back to town, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would like to go collect my the two javelins that I threw at him. Okay. That may or may not have. Yep. At least I'll have to look for him. I don't know if they fell out while he was misty stepping everywhere. You'll find them. You'll find them eventually. Okay. You know where the combat took place. There's disturbed snow all over the freaking place. You walk around that disturbed snow, you'll find them eventually. Reach hey, in your steps. One last thing. Uh, that frozen cobalt. Yeah. Is that still there? Uh, you did not dig deep enough. You were digging the opening out just to get through. Um, he may still be there under everything. So... Mental note to tell the miners there's a frozen cobalt at the bottom of <laughs> the entrance, the blocked entrance. Probably a good idea. All right. Let's go someplace warm. All right. So you guys uh, walk back. Um, you go to the inn or do you go to the bar? I want to go to the inn. Okay. Yeah. Clean up a little bit, maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. Clean up for the date. I just meant all the blood and gore and everything else, but sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, brain brains. Brains. <laughs> um, you get back and Ellie's you see Ellie's face actually light up for the first time since the travel back, and she realizes, Oh, the showing is still in my room. <laughs> Oh, and she God goes damn it. two steps at a time up the stairs and bursts into her room and closes the door behind her. And you guys clean up and... Oh, yeah. I'm going back to my room and cleaning up. And back to your room and preparing for the date night. Awesome. And sure. Uh, we'll, Is there we'll... time for a long rest between now and then? No. <laughs> Right. You're like a half hour, or not a half hour, okay. a half a long rest. It would be so, really uncomfortable attending an event like that without any spell slots. All right. so is. I mean, I think you could take a long rest and just yeah. meet us there later. I don't think so. It depends on how long we're there. But yeah, yeah. Doc would probably... While we're resting there at the inn, Doc would probably use a couple more hit dice since he knows that the clerics are tapped, just to make sure, because with a full hit points, he's basically back to reset. Right. So he probably would do that. Okay. We'll pick up with a date night with Torga uh, next week. Awesome. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Can't wait. If I have any energy left. Woo. Let's say, uh, Aaron, how are you feeling? You gotta feel like you're you have a little post concussion syndrome right now. Like he's been through a blender. <laughs> I'm back up to thirty. Uh, I I'm thinking I might do the same thing as as Doc and use another hit dice just because you know 
I don't have spell slots or anything, so there's nothing I need to worry about on a long rest. But so, yeah, no, I'm. I I feel a little weird. I feel a little, a little uh, like I had a rough day. <laughs> Guys, I I had the weirdest dreams today. That you were cracked in the head multiple times with a giant icicle. So, um, if he takes fire damage, this regeneration trait does not function at the start of his turn. He only dies if he starts his turn with zero hit points and doesn't regenerate. So you need to hit him with fire to turn off his regeneration. And the whole time I just wanted him to attack me so I could hellish <laughs> rebuke the entire <laughs> time. You were never the target he wanted. <laughs> never was. I feel like we stumbled upon the fire idea a little too late. Perhaps. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that was... Uh... It, made for, it made for a good story moment, though. <laughs> things that will not die. <laughs> I think I think that definitely will cause a, uh, a conversation of who should should be doing what during a combat and where and communication and that kind of stuff when we have some downtime. Yep. Well, definitely a learning opportunity for us. For the fact that Ellie had to cast Cure that many times in a combat, we hope that she can use her spells for something else. But it was, um, it was a thing where uh, it reminded me of the crow when the, the bad guy sticks the sword through the guy's throat and he's sitting there just kind of shaking and goes, oh, for fuck's sake, die, will you? And give me that. <laughs> the gun and shoots him twice. Uh-huh. Yeah, that seems accurate. <laughs> All right. Thanks to everybody for joining us today. It was, I mean, we literally fought for our life. Well, I fought for my life today. <laughs> you fought for your life. God. Um, You're lucky Ellie likes you. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, oh, my. Follow us here on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tom M. Norm. Uh, follow us on Twitter. I am at Tom M. Norman. Genius is at Lazy Dragon GB. Cooch is at Crazy Cooch. And Mr. DMJC is at Wildfire1265. Give us some support. Tell everybody else about the show. Tell them that we like to fight and that we don't know how to put people out of their misery unless it's with fire, apparently. Um, Do it with fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Share the show with people. If, if, if you are enjoying your time, share it out. Tweet it out. Uh, retweet our tweets that tweeted earlier in the tweet with the retweet and tweet. And if you don't enjoy it, bring them along anyway to share in your misery. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> misery yes. loves company, folks. Misery does love company, especially when you can point and laugh and say, ha ha, I fooled you. And uh, yeah. Uh, what else was I going to say? Re oh, I'm doing replays now for Saturday nights. I set up the replay. Um, I think one of these days I'm going to mess around with doing a full day replay, meaning I'll select like six, the last six sessions and just Crixus Palooza. We'll running. call it. Yeah. We'll, Crixus yes. Palooza. We will call it the Crixus Palooza. So look for well, that. Hey, maybe, if you, uh, maybe next week, if you use the last, the last six episodes, they all happened in the same day. So that would actually make sense. That is no. true. Figure it out this week, Norm. Next <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> I said, figure it out this week. Next Saturday, it needs to run. Yep, I will do that. I will. The, the The question is whether I can get them to run in the order that I want them to run in. That would be confusing if they didn't. Yes. Interesting. So, yeah, look for that. That'll be next Saturday. Um, Patreon.com slash two nerds one quest. Uh, that is another way to support us. One dollar a month gets you the unedited podcast with pre and post show content. Um, one dollar a month for eight, essentially eight hours of content. I don't see the downside of that. Uh, so take a look, check it out. We have some other cool rewards as well. Uh, that'll just about do it. So for me, for JC, for Genius, and for Mr. Crazy Cooch, we are Two Nerds One Quest, and we will catch you next week. Now I gotta find something that's immune to fire. Ooh. <laughs>